All right, I'm here with Jacob and John. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. good. Can you guys just briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'll start. Uh, my name is Jacob O'Connor, senior here at Wichita State University um, from the St. Louis area, technically like Illinois, mm -hmm. but I went to high school with this guy over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, in high school, I started a podcast called Venture Mentality. Got to have on the co-founder of Netflix, professional athletes, a bunch of really cool people, and did that for a couple of years with some merchandise and whatnot. And then, um, Ended up joining a venture capital program called University Venture uh, Crossroads Fund. Is that right? UVFC. University, University Venture, Venture Fund Crossroads. Sure, it's Crossroads, yeah. And then, uh, kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And then we've just been doing odd jobs here and there, working yeah. with different startups in the community. And then we started one about a year ago called Player Card, working with college athletes. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess I'll introduce myself quickly too. Uh, I'm John Peterson. I'm from Wichita State as well. I'm a senior here studying business administration and real estate finance. I'm also from the St. Louis area. I went to high school with him. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we played sports all throughout high school and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's kind of where um, the framework for player card came in. Um, I've only been at Wichita State for you know eight to 10 months. Okay. I was at Illinois State before. Yeah. Um, transferred into Wichita State. Uh, since being here, I've had some really great opportunities working with Nextus and and, and that group over there, and I'm at the uh, University Venture Fund Crossroads as well. So yeah. Yeah. definitely really cool. Can you guys talk about the Crossroad thing a little more? What, what is that? And yeah. when did you get into it? So uh, I always feel like the acronym's backwards. It's I UBFC, know. I know that's <laughs> bad, I always feel like it flows better being UBCF anyways. Uh, essentially, it's a venture capital program for college students. Yeah. And it was uh, started with Royal Street Ventures in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to bring together or they wanted to make venture a more, I guess, prominent opportunity for college kids mm -hmm. in, the, in the Midwest. Um, most of the money that's been allocated to startups is coming from the coast, okay. mainly the West Coast. Sure. And they wanted to kind of start kids young and create a great network of venture capitalists here in the Midwest. And mm -hmm. so they created this opportunity called UBFC, where college kids can come together, they can look at companies, they actually conduct due diligence, and they yeah. have, we're actually investing in them. Very cool. So this year we're working on standing up a $10 million fund. Then last year we were able to invest a couple hundred thousand dollars in some cool. startups. That's awesome. So I started, uh, this is my second year, and then yeah. I'll talk about this I, I just started this semester is when it officially started. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool, the structure of it. So it goes through like a whole curriculum the first semester, and then the second semester you're actually applying that to oh, you cool. know, deals and things like that. Um, we're doing some of that right now, but you know, for the incoming interns is what they call us. Mm -hmm. uh, this first semester is really to kind of teach and and show how things work and all the terms and things like that. Sure. So it's well, really that's really cool. Because yeah. I think, I mean, I feel like I, I don't know, I kind of know what goes off that, but it's like from listening to the podcast, like all in or like yeah. my first million or something. Like, oh, yeah. I could do that. But it's like, that's awesome. They actually have a curriculum. They teach you what it actually Oh yeah, it's, it's really cool, and they one of their like capstone events they do is called Founder Slap, and they bring founders and investors together for like a two or three hour period. And they facilitate over three hundred conversations, wow. and they do that each semester. And so we're nearing like a thousand conversations that's that we created yeah. through this. And it's all we we have the venture capitalists who actually will like kind of teach us about venture capital, but that this is a student led program. Mm -hmm. So we're coordinating all of this, and we're acting you know as adults. Sure, yeah. so that's been super exciting. And, I also think that us working with Nextus, um, yeah. who worked with AVP, mm -hmm. Accelerated Venture Partners with Quinn Robertson, they tied in perfectly together. Oh, uh, yeah, you yeah. see the venture side and the angel side, and whatever we didn't pick up in UBFC, he was able to hammer home with AVP. Very cool. And what got you, like, how did you get connected with Quinn in that program? So uh, that was through uh, Rob Gerlach. Okay, uh, that makes sense, yeah. So, yeah, so. Everything's through Rob Gerlach. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So he kind of facilitated that for us. and. And now we're we're pretty close with Quinn and stuff. Yeah, so. and I, cool. I gotta say too, Rob's gonna hate me if I don't give him a shout out. He really did get us started in a lot of this stuff. Yeah, my freshman year, he kind of took me under uh, yeah. his wing and started me off in tech transfer and commercialization, and mm -hmm. uh, he got me to work with a bunch of startups. And so, thank you, Rob. Big appreciation. <laughs> big, big shout out to Rob there. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know a lot of the Nexus people. I haven't really worked with them directly on a lot of stuff, but it's cool to see. I mean, everything that Josh and their whole yeah. team has put together and. Are you guys going to do much with uh, Wichita Startup Week? Uh, nothing on the agenda yet. They had sent us some things for their startup program, but we have a couple events and whatnot coming mm -hmm. up, and yeah. so we weren't sure of the overlap. Yeah, we want to overcommit. Yeah, no problem. Um, um, why did you guys pick Wichita State? 
So I came to Wichita State because they offer me the most scholarship money. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Honestly, I'd been here once beforehand, and that was after I found out that I won the Jabara scholarship. Oh, cool. And so it was, I, I could say I got lucky because I didn't realize how good of a city Wichita was for entrepreneurship, yeah. but I, it was kind of a blind jump yeah. just based off that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and for me, you know, I was at Illinois State for two and a half years and uh, just kind of going through the motions, honestly. Yeah. You know, wasn't really applying myself. I was in a business fraternity um, doing that kind of stuff, but nothing really to set me apart from anybody else. Um, we kind of had the idea, the concept of player card. So that was kind of one of the contributing factors that was like, okay, you know, if we're going to do this thing, jump with both feet sure. in the water, you know? Yeah. And that along with, you know, I, I worked with Rob a little bit at Illinois State and just kind of got to know him and stuff mm -hmm. too. So. The, the opportunities that he kind of brought up um, with me moving to Wichita State, I was like, it's the right time to do it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What's, what's the biggest difference between either the schools or Wichita and I don't even know where Illinois State is? Yeah, so Illinois State, um, kind of the same, kind of the same locational characteristics uh, as in Bloomington, Illinois. Okay, so, Bloomington, that's right. you know, you had Peoria that was an hour away and you had Chicago that was like two hours away. So, yeah, kind of, kind of the same geographic location basis, um, but it was a teaching school. Mm -hmm. So no engineering, they mm -hmm. just, I think they just started an engineering program oh, okay. last year. Wow. So, you know, there was there was not a whole lot of uh, push to start entrepreneurship or, or business. It was, you know, they had a great business school, but it wasn't pushing those right. you know, forward thinking kind of aspects. Sure. And, you know, getting to Wichita State, you have all this, um, you know, this technology that you can use, you have all these opportunities. If you apply yourself, you really, you know, reap the benefits from that and you can put yourself ahead. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it makes sense, for sure. Um, Jacob, venture mentality, can you talk about, I know when you interviewed me, we talked a little bit about it. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so that was a passion project. Um, this goes back to when I was 16, I got selected to be in like this kind of really cool entrepreneurial program in my high school called the Monroe County Startup Program. And essentially what they did was they took four kids from like five different schools across that county and took them out of school for the first two hours of every day, put them in the community where they got to learn from local business leaders, mm -hmm. uh, how to actually run a business, what goes into it, and then at the end of the year, you're challenged to start your own business. Mm -hmm. And so that's the program I went through. And um, kind of the capstone event at the end of the year was to create your own business. Mm -hmm. And they would get, give out the award called Entrepreneur of the Year. And so I ended up winning that award for a seat cushion that I had designed for truck drivers. That's awesome. It was meant to like alleviate back pain while absorbing the shock vibrations. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a really cool opportunity that landed me an internship when I was 16 Very cool. with this global manufacturing company for seat cushions. Wow. And so I got to kind of learn what that was like and, and have this really cool experience at 16 where I was in, I was with the product development team and everyone else is 40, 50, right, right. 50 60. And so um, it was eye opening. And then while I was working that job, I was thinking to myself, I don't know if seat cushions is what I want to do with my life. Sure. And so I had just found out about this cool new medium called podcasts. And I was hearing people interview all these very successful entrepreneurs. And I thought to myself, why couldn't I do what they're doing? Right. And so uh, I decided that I was going to start my own podcast. And I called it Venture Mentality. And I just started reaching out to these people, cold emailing, cold calling, cold DMs, anything that you could think. I, I did it. I was very scrappy mm -hmm. with it. And ended up doing over 150 interviews, like I mentioned, um, professional athletes, co-founder of Netflix. CEOs, mm -hmm. uh, even like Justin Bieber's bodyguard, just random, wow, okay. exciting people. Awesome, random but awesome. Yeah. yeah, so it was a great, great um, kind of journey that I went on. I learned a lot, got to do a couple interviews in person that I'll never forget about, mm -hmm. and uh, then I started a merchandise line off of that, and I did all that for about two and a half years. Okay, and so I'll you're start. not still doing that, or are you still doing that? So the podcast transitioned. I, the Venture Mentality series came to a close. I felt like it was a solid ending, mm -hmm. uh, and so I started a new podcast called Real Conversations mm -hmm. that I've been doing very actively still. Very cool. So that's the long-term play for me, is I'll be doing that for as long as I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple exciting interviews that I'm working on right now awesome. as well, but... Uh, venture mentality is kind of like the mindset and brand that I think I identify with. So mm -hmm. I still have the hats that I sell. I still wear the apparel. Yeah. And I have big plans for that in the future too. But yeah. the podcast through a conversation is That's now. cool. I think it gives you a good excuse to sit down with people or virtually or in person. Right. Learn from other people that, again, I think I've heard other like podcasts talk about it. But it's like you're not going to get whatever the Netflix CEO or mm -hmm. CEO on the phone for 
10 minutes, let alone an hour or 30 minutes. You know what I mean? right. But if you say, hey, it's a podcast. Right. And most of the time, I don't think anyone's ever, which again, this is just like a local podcast, but anyone's ever been like, well, what are your download numbers? They right. don't care. They're like a guest on a podcast. And they're like, oh, sure. Yeah. And it could be nobody, but you're getting a chance to sit down and talk to them. And so. The best thing is when someone who has an incredible story does their first podcast and it's with you, they're like, oh my gosh, someone wants to talk about this. I'm like, dude, your story's incredible. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then I think it's on pause right now, but the Innovators Podcast, that's something you guys have done together. I know you could do it for a while. Yeah, and then I came in yeah. to host it for a while. Yeah. yeah. You guys enjoyed doing that as well? Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was through, uh, is like a partnership with the Alumni Association here, Wichita State, in tech transfer and commercialization. Mm -hmm. And so it was interviewing a lot of like the innovators and entrepreneurs here in Wichita. Sure. And so that also helped grow our network here, which yeah. that's one of the huge benefits of podcasting. It's just the network. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so we're here to talk about player card before we jump straight into that talk about NIL a little bit What what is NIL kind of how has it changed recently? What what does that look like? Yeah, so uh, July 20th. I'll just start off with what it is and you can jump in yep. uh, July 20th. Or sorry July 1st of 2021 the NCAA overturned a previous regulation that now enables college athletes to receive compensation based off their name image and likeness mm -hmm. So what that means is there's still no pay for play you can't use this recruiting mechanism but college athletes now can uh, capitalize on their social media, on their brand value, on things that mm -hmm. typically anyone else would have been able to. Athletes are now in that pool of being able to be, I guess, maybe like an influencer yeah. is a great word to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as we talk about kind of the environment of the NIL space, it's a lot of people refer to it as the wild, wild west because it's brand new. We kind of just, yeah. we jumped right into it. There was no kind of gradual, um, you know, adoption of this. It was kind of the floodgates were open. So that's kind of been an interesting space to navigate, kind of just figuring out what we can do, what we can't do. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's kind of all up in the air. You know, some states have regulations on it, some don't. It's it's a really interesting space, and we've been learning a lot so far. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And when did you guys get started? So it, this is July of last year, 2021. When did you guys get started? We got started July 2nd. We didn't even officially incorporate until October though. Okay. It was yeah. kind of like we were spinning our wheels trying to figure things out. Yeah. yeah. But the, the wheels started turning and we started looking into some things pretty heavily like yeah. right after July first. Yeah, like that. how do you sell pickaxes during the gold rush. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome. Um so what do these look like then? Like what is it an NIL deal? I think you hear about like the big ones and we can talk about some of those, but like is it like, hey, you're gonna do five Instagram posts and I'll give you five grand or like what is what does it look like right now? Yeah. And so even to talk about what you were gonna say with like what is the deals to look like, right off the bat, John and I realized that college athletes from the biggest schools, from the top sports, we're gonna get these absurd deals. Right. You're gonna get the hundred thousand dollar deal, the million dollar deal right. that we've seen come through. And so um, our thought was how do you capitalize on the athletes that don't get as much focus right or i guess in other words like the other 99 percent of athletes right. they have inherent brand value but no one is looking to, to them mm -hmm. and so we started off originally um, by doing social media posts in exchange for meals okay and so we actually received some funding from the state of kansas to develop an app to help Very facilitate cool. our nil deals but that was the original offering is uh, john and i have this mission that we've been working on of every wichita state student being able to go to a restaurant and receive a meal in exchange for a social media post whenever okay. they want to. Sure. We're not there yet, but that's the goal. And then you can talk about what we've kind of expanded into. Yeah, we've started to realize that um, the event space in Wichita, and I think that's a lot of what NIL is going to be. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily going to be the social media post, but it's going to be events where, you know, people come meet the athletes and mm -hmm. fans come, or, you know, maybe it's a corporate event where the yeah. The employees and their families come and hang out, and take pictures, sign sure. autographs, things like that. So that's that's what we've been moving into in the past couple months is seeing where we can get um, athletes and businesses to you know help with marketing, or yeah, help with, yeah, brand awareness, whatever. I would say the mission with that one is it's like our goal here is to bring industry with community and athletes and bring all of them together in like a mutually beneficial mm -hmm. event where they can all interact. Because we have so many phenomenal, incredibly large businesses here in Wichita. And if we can get them involved with the community, engaging with the athletes, we think that it just brings Wichita closer together. Yeah, for sure. In general. Yeah, I think it gives everyone more of a stake too. Like, okay, even like, I don't know, like you said, smaller sports, or like women's basketball. Mm -hmm. Like if you know the women's basketball players, you might be more inclined to actually support them. Right. So that's been a huge struggle for 
from the WNBA, mm -hmm. like nobody right. games, but it's like, how do you connect them to like get them to support their more? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and to be fair, we've seen really good feedback from all the businesses we've talked to. They're very excited. They're like, oh, you know, teams that we didn't think necessarily they would ask for, they're asking for. So right. it's, it's really interesting to sure. see mm -hmm. that kind of. And is that mainly right. events or is that? I would say I would say that's mainly on the event side. That's what we're pushing right now yeah. is the events. Um, like like Jacob was talking about, we have that app in development, mm -hmm. so that's still a project we're actively working on. But that's not what we're pushing right now. Mm -hmm. The when you said events, I haven't really thought about this before, but it kind of reminds me of like musicians. Like okay, they might make whatever their hundredth of a penny off of their Spotify <laughs> stream, but like. The money's in concerts, right? right? So maybe that, I mean, that could end up being kind of the same with NIL stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how does Wichita compare to other communities? Do, do you have like a good correlation or comparison? Like, I mean, obviously there's like Omaha, Kansas City and places like that, but then there's also like big, big schools. Yeah, I'd compare it to KU, to Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, they're, Wichita is not the same as as KU would be right. in that regard. So like the uh, KU's basketball team just won the national championship. Sure. And so their NIL deals are through the roof right now. Right. And I have no doubt that some of those players are getting six figures uh, oh, of NIL sure, deals. Yeah. And so I would say Wichita's market is developing, which is exciting. That's why John and I are happy to be here right now because whenever we go knock on a door and talk to a business owner and they light up because they didn't realize they could even work with college athletes. Right. They're like, wait a second, we can do this now? Yeah. And so Wichita is still developing in that regard, but I think mm -hmm. it's exciting because of the reception we're getting. Yeah, I think it's hard because one, Wichita State, not as much anymore, but it's non traditional, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like historically been the average age is like I don't know, 25 to 28 versus Lawrence is probably 20 or 21. Right. Right. Um, I don't know, it's interesting to think about though. That, yeah, and then I think the other part that comes to mind is I think the school in general has just been kind of behind. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know much, I just read the headlines, but that's a big reason Bill Wright got fired, right? Because yeah, right. he wasn't on top of the NIL deals. When Wichita State basketball program was like one of the last ones that seemed like to have anything going, but yeah. it's interesting. You guys were like right on the tail of it, and yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, we met up with the new AD, and he seems like a really, really good guy, yeah. and we're mm -hmm. very excited to you know work with them and, and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for sure. Um, the other one that comes to mind in town is uh, is it Armchair Strategies? Mm -hmm. Do you guys talk to them much, or are they do you view them as competitors? What does that look like? No, I think we're all working together. The yeah. same mission to. <clears throat> bring college athletes more NIL deals and bring the community the same opportunities. Um, we're taking a little bit different angles, honestly. Yeah. From what I've seen, Armchair is more of, they're working with the donors, and uh, it, it, there's like the fund model with NIL, sure. to where uh, people donate money and then it's an exchange for different types of events or uh, marketing activities, wherever the case may be. Whereas ours is more of the small business route, direct to gotcha. okay. the direct to consumer yeah. B2B. So, same field, just a little yeah, bit different yeah, perspectives. For sure. And ideally, there should be enough to go around. Right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of money in Wichita, so yeah, and there's not that many student athletes. Yeah. So. <clears throat> um, for the app, what is that process like? So, do you have a developer? Are you finding a developer? How, how do you go about that? Yeah. You want to take that one? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, we have a developer that we got referred to out of Ohio. I don't know if we want to name drop them or not. It doesn't. I think yeah. it's good for me. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what is. RMR development. RMR development. Yeah. So we've been working with them a lot. We've been working on pretty much since day one, really. Yeah. It was it was pretty close to the origination of it. Uh, you know, conceptually we have the concept down. Uh, they know what we're talking about. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just that back and forth. Okay, this is what I want. Yeah. This is what I can provide, kind of a thing. And what we're running into right now is our Instagram API is kind of giving us a little bit of a a struggle because we want to gather all that data that athletes are mm -hmm. providing through their social media posts and um, Instagram's pretty finicky oh, yeah. with what you can yeah. give and what you can't give. Facebook doesn't like to play well with others. So. No, they definitely <laughs> don't. They definitely don't. So that's a little bit of a hiccup, but I'm pretty confident that we're, we're good and we're moving forward. Sure. So. Yeah. Is that, do you have to like try to get approved or is it just like a matter of... Yeah, it's a very formal approval okay. process. And so it's just a lot of hoops to jump through that we're doing right now. Because I've heard of like uh, Clear, it's like Clear with a K. Mm -hmm. They have a really good one. It's like for influencer stuff. Okay. But uh, it's the same type of deal. Like it pulls in all your, you connect it, it pulls in all the metrics from Instagram. Yeah. So like if a post got 5,000 impressions, they can see all that without you having to say, hey, I got 5,000 impressions. Right. They can actually see like that's legit. So mm -hmm. right. that's cool. Um, how has attraction been with either businesses or the athletes? 
It's been pretty good actually. The yeah. the athletes are really cool because we kind of found once you start working with one group and they're posting about it, they're talking about it, yeah. they're genuinely excited. And so there's been this good word of mouth organic yeah. effect of it spreading throughout the athletes for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, bet, uh, I mean, I don't know how you know, they used to like have their like um, tutors and everything over in the building attached to Coke Arena. Yep. And so they would all like hang out and stuff. I'm sure that helps. Like they're like, hey, I'm the softball player talking to a track star or whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, no, they definitely interact a lot too. Yeah. And it helps that we've become friends with a good amount of them too. Yeah. And so, I mean, we'll be hanging out even outside of NIL situations. Mm -hmm. And so it just helps uh, us and our reputation in general. Yeah, for sure. What's the biggest challenge? Is there like a certain team that's hard? Is it a certain, like getting certain businesses on board? What's the hardest challenge right now? Scheduling. Scheduling is definitely a hard thing because they have practices. They yeah, right. have just have the conversations about stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you talk with the business, they're like, "Okay, I want to properly make sure that we can spread the word about what we're about to do for this event." Mm -hmm. They're like, "Okay, let's look at this date." And I, I'm like, "All right, let's go talk right. to the athletes." We talk to the athletes, and you got three different sports you're coordinating yeah. three different sporting schedules while trying to match it with the event uh, for the business business mm -hmm. schedule. Maybe you need to build some software for that too. It's like <laughs> Calendly, I say, we're in IL athletes. Yeah, <laughs> Calendly, I IL like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it seems, uh, I read the, uh, it was a big, which business journal. Yep. It seems like you had some like kind of big dogs on board. So it's Tom Devlin from Renaissance Center. People don't know his name's on campus, as well as Craig Barton, Barton School of Business. How is that kind of having them as mentors and kind of just having conversations with them? It's incredible. Uh, so we, we ran into Tom Gentilly and Craig Barton at an event that we were speaking at, and they were super supportive of what we were doing and offered some great insight. And then Tom Devlin's more of a recent one, and that one's surreal to me because I read his book, Playing Through, mm -hmm. uh, about a year ago, and I said to myself, man, I want to find a way to meet him. Right. Like, incredible story, um, great grit, and a fantastic ending, honestly. Yeah. And so whenever we got that meeting, him done over through the roof. That's really cool. It, it's still surreal to us, but they're so knowledgeable, so helpful. Yeah, I'll have to, I honestly didn't know he had a book, so I'll have to go <laughs> read that. I should probably know that, but yeah. I'll check that out. Um, for the app, you mentioned you kind of worked with them out the gate. Was that from that funding program? Like, how are you paying them? Or are they trying to take stuff, or trying to take stuff? Like, do they have a partnership deal that they get stuff on the back end, or how does that? Yeah, yeah so it's it's the Kite program through the department, which hope or uh, Kansas Department of Commerce, Commerce or something? Commerce, yeah. Commerce. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a proof of concept. Um, so you pretty much take a really rough idea of mm -hmm. what you want to do, you present it to the board, and then you get the award and one. So cool. we were um, working with them before that too. Right, yeah. right, right. So nice. that, was, that was our way of Very cool. funding. And what, what if, I don't even know what it costs now. Is it like five figures, six figures? What is it, like ballpark? Oh, five. Okay. I mean, six if you want to do it. Like, if you look at like Uber's app, yeah, that's six figures. Sure, seven. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to get an app out that functions for like your first one, they're going to buy. Gotcha. Yeah. So I know it's significantly cheaper. I had an idea like a year out of school, and I was calling around asking around. Like, oh, that's fifty to hundred grand. I'm like, well, I guess I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like, if it was like, say, yeah, four or five figures, I could maybe make it work. But yeah, so that's really cool. Um, have you guys considered like, I mean, obviously you have the funding, so you can get probably some legit companies, but like working in how like within Wichita State, like some developers or some college kids to do that? Or is that, you're just like, I just want to make sure that right the first time? Yeah. I mean, we, we have worked with some master students and um, some other people on campus, but uh, like like we were talking about, we worked with them since yeah. day one. So sure. just, yeah, yeah. it was kind of just natural to go with sense. them yeah. just right out of the gate. We've had some other ideas that we've been working on um, with a couple master students and stuff like that, but yeah, nothing, nothing really, can, nothing really formal right now. So. Yeah, is there? I know there's a couple of platforms. I can't think of the names, but I just heard about them on other podcasts that are kind of tackling nil, yeah. nil stuff. Um, I guess what do you are you familiar with? I'm sure you're familiar with those. What kind of different approaches? Anyone else going after the small businesses as well, or is that kind of your unique edge on that? So the big ones, open doors. Uh, That's right. They're yeah. everywhere. And I, I view a lot of like the apps right now that are out like that nationwide as tools because they actually can help. Sure. Uh, Open Doors handles a lot of compliance. And so from our standpoint, um, taxes are handled different, differently in college athletes. Sure. And Open Doors actually um, will help with that entire process. Oh, nice, yeah. And so we don't really view them as competition. And I, you can disagree, but I think I'm still yet to see 
many business, many NIL companies working with small businesses and kind of taking the different approach of addressing the 99 like we are. Right, right. Yeah, so I, I feel like it's gotta be a more one-on-one -on -one kind of basis here locally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, a lot of these businesses don't know they can even work in the NIL space. Right. They don't have an avenue to do that. They don't know about open doors or yeah. marketplace or wherever else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we come to them and they're like, oh, I didn't even know that was an option. Right. You know? Okay, if it's a big company, they might have resources. But if you're a small company, you're probably just trying to handle inflation and exactly. the supply chain issues <laughs> and just keep the doors open. Where's the avocados? Right, exactly right. <laughs> um, so what's your business model? We don't have to get specifics, but yeah. do you take like a cut of the event, a percentage, or like is it a flat fee? What does that look like? Yeah, it's typically a percentage okay. of the events. And then uh, whenever we do like the meal exchange with the restaurant, that's usually just a flat fee. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and what is the bigger plan? Like, so let's say you nail this in Wichita, do you take this to other cities then and go for that type of small business approach? Yeah, I think franchising. Yeah, we'll franchising. Okay. Uh, somewhat of a franchise yeah. model would, would be cool to move to different areas. And yeah. Stuff. So. Well, because I think it'd be hard. I mean, scaling wise, I think you always have to do things that don't scale, right? Otherwise, you'll never get to scale. Right. But like, right. You guys are getting familiar, gone, getting more familiar with like the Wichita area in general. So it's not as hard to go door to door, business to business. But like, let's say you want to do it in Omaha, yeah, or Lawrence, or somewhere else. Like that might be hard, not knowing what that looks like or not knowing the small businesses. Right. right. Well, and we've always heard too that Wichita is kind of a tough market when it comes to certain sure. industries like this one. And so if you can start off in a hard market and you can learn kind of the minute details, the ins and outs, then it'd be easier to go to a market that's a little bit more fluent, right? Like, um, like a KC or a Dallas or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Is Wichita big enough to make this a win? I think that's what people always ask: is like, okay, is Wichita big enough to support this? Whatever that is. Like for a while, it was Top Golf. Is big? Is Wichita right. big enough to support Top Golf? Obviously, but hopefully they are. They're building one. So yeah, right. But it's <laughs> like, uh, is it? You know what I mean? Like, is there like a critical mass? You have to work with fifty businesses to make it work fit for you guys, or have you guys thought about that? We've tried sizing the market so many times. That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's shooting in the dark, but I'm just yeah. curious if that's something you thought about. Yeah, with a with a new industry like this, it's hard to kind of value and, right. and predict that kind of stuff just mm -hmm. because you have absolutely no data. Right. right. So it's it's kind of difficult. I think we both agree that this could be a win in Wichita. Yeah. Um, and you know, a win for us is we nailed this market. We're going to go somewhere else with it. I think. Sure. Yes. It's that expansion. Yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah, and the weird part is like when you size a market, it for us size the Wichita market. Every time we go out and talk to a business owner and their eyes open, mm. then we just grew by however much that deal value yeah, is worth. For sure. And so you can't really. It's hard to put a number on it until yeah. we've hit every contact here. Right, right. And then if they, assuming it goes well, which I'm sure it will, like they'll probably be coming back then. Right. right. Some, yeah. Something recurring. Um, Five or ten years from now, what? Why would this have failed, or why would this have succeeded? Kind of look at it both ways. Why would this have failed in the future? Looking back, I would say how labor intensive this is, from a standpoint of scheduling, coordinating, mm -hmm. being in person, facilitating. I don't know if it could be a two-man job if we scale somewhere else, or if Wichita gets so big, we would definitely need to bring on more people. Sure. that'll add more costs. Yeah, and so if the unit economics work out or not, would be my reason for why it could fail. Sure, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, just just looking at all those factors and stuff like that is, you know, it's a lot for us to do. I mean, I, I think we can do it at a small scale, but we'll definitely have to incorporate more people at some point. Right, yeah, for sure. So five years from now, this is a home run. What does that look like? I think franchising is cool. I also think that so one of the things we've noticed with Open Doors is they are a platform for compliance, but they also conduct deals. But in order to conduct deals, you have to have supply and demand. Mm -hmm. They've gone out to all the schools, they've negotiated the deal with the athletes, they have the supply of the athletes built up. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, what they're missing is the demand. Most businesses, in Wichita at least, don't realize that Open Doors exist and they can interact with the athletes through there for the deals. Right. And so if we can create a number of deal volumes to where people know about the player card brand mm -hmm. and they're going to us for the deals, that I think that could be strategic for Open Doors to at some point acquire if the deal flow yeah. through player card was, yeah, yeah. was large enough. Is that a big goal for you guys? Do you want to be acquired or is that like one of those things you'd be happy if you just ran that for 10 years or something? I think, you know, we look at it both ways. Yeah, it's a lifestyle yeah, sure. business. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. we'd be happy with that. I mean, but if we got acquired, I mean, we wouldn't turn it down. Right, either, no, for know? sure. So, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and you guys are both, I mean, former athletes, so it's, mm -hmm. working in sports is awesome. So that's right. cool, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what am I 
like, listen, is there something that I'm not thinking about with all this? What is something you guys think about with your day-to-day look like? Our day-to-day is crazy, honestly. Like, we, we were thinking about it. Um, it's normal to us, but sometimes we sit there and we talk about, like, what our friends are up to elsewhere. Sure. And it's like, oh, that'd be nice to be doing what they're doing. <laughs> but it's kind of just like the trade-offs because we're – we're going all day. Yeah. Like it's a it's a full investment, and we're even at the office on the weekends, and it's what's required to us. But from the outside, especially college kid angle, it's kind of like, how are you doing all this? Right. That's usually what we kind of hear. Yeah, yeah. I would say we are far from content to yeah. where we are right now. It's yeah, you know, we're putting in the hours. We're here from you know seven to eleven o'clock at night, just <laughs> yeah. grinding out, trying to make more connections, trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. So I think I think that sets us apart from a lot of people, especially mm-hmm. oh, for sure. know, yeah. students and stuff like that. But um, yeah, day to day, it's just a lot of meetings where we can meet. We'll take meetings with you mm-hmm. know any value we can get out of anybody is is helpful. Yeah. Well, so. and it's, it's unorthodox things too that you wouldn't consider. Like we spent some time last week taking our eight foot by ten foot backdrop out that we have for our Spirit Air Systems event mm-hmm. and putting it in the wind and trying to see if it'll hold up and how can we make sure this is structural and yeah, yeah. just like all the yeah. little things that like we never would have imagined would come with this business. Oh for sure. We've yeah. got to handle them ourselves. Yeah, that's super interesting. Um what was I gonna say? Uh so obviously this will probably keep you guys in Wichita for a while. Before this, was your idea, hey, we're gonna go to a bigger kind of startup city, or what What would be your goal before this? And then obviously you'll probably stick around Wichita for a little while at least, but what did that look like? Yeah, I think our, our first idea was max scalability, mm-hmm. and just, we we wanted this, this app to be, you know, created in Wichita, and then it'll just disperse everywhere to every mm-hmm. other city with college campus. Sure. You know? And now we've kind of realized that you know, we need to under, totally understand the Wichita market. We need to really grind our gears here and try to nail it yeah. in Wichita first. For sure. So, no, I get that, that makes sense. Definitely. We were trying to boil the ocean at first, <clears throat> and now we're realizing you gotta go door to door and literally knock on it. <laughs> oh yeah, that makes sense. I think, I mean, I feel like I've heard that in a lot of different scenarios, so it makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nail it down and figure out, like, figure out what it takes to really make something succeed and then mm-hmm. scale it. But I think a lot of people, I mean, even with what Next State, Nextus is doing with Next Stage, mm-hmm. is like, Wichita is like the perfect size. Like, it's not too big, it's not too small. They can do these like pilot competitions yeah. and see if something works. If yeah. it doesn't work here, it might not work somewhere else. So right. if you can get it right here, then it probably could work a lot of different places. Right. Very cool. Um, I guess what, before we kind of move on to some questions I ask everybody, what advice would you give someone else wanting to start a business, whether it's kind of your former high school selves or I mean, other college kids even here at Wichita State, what advice would you give? I'd say from a, a college kid perspective, just talking to anybody that you can. I mean, we've had so many odd connections that turn out to be so impactful for us. It's like you, you talk to somebody and you think, okay, we're going to go into this meeting. We're going to be there for 15 minutes and you know, probably not going to get a lot out of it. Mm-hmm. And then you come out and you're like, that was one of the best meetings we've had in the past month or mm-hmm. two. And we're, you know, we're going to be so far head yeah. so I just say like connecting just trying to network get your name out there mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing it really is yeah I would say probably my younger self the highs are high and the lows are low mm-hmm. so trying to like ride in the middle yeah because that's always it's so fun coming out of a big meeting like the Tom Dev one mm-hmm. you're at the pinnacle and then you get an email from the accountant or you figured out that there's something you forgot to do or whatever and it's that's a low and mm-hmm. it gets stressful but just if you can right in that middle it's a good spot to be yeah for sure yeah both great advice um so these questions i kind of cherry picked from podcasts i've listened to forever um and then a couple i kind of came up with but what is something you often recommend to people it could be podcast books anything like that i like the morning brew newsletter yeah, yeah that, that's one of the biggest brew. things yeah. that's i've been doing that for the past you know year probably or something mm-hmm. and I hate watching the news. I can't watch the news. It just makes yeah, me mad. So for me to have a newsletter that just kind of states the facts yeah. in, a, in a very informal kind of way yeah. is it's it's huge for me because then I know the news and I don't have to go through all the BS of yeah. you know politics and everything like that. So yeah, that would be for me. No, I morning brews on my list. Uh, I recommend the this week in Stars podcast yeah. by Jason Calcanis. Mm-hmm. 
I stopped re listening recently. I'm not a huge fan of the co-host, but he really got me started. I've listened in a while, so yeah, he got me started in venture capital, like understanding all that. He does a great job yeah. breaking it down. Uh, the Acquired Podcast is another really good one. Okay. Um, and then Real Conversations is a great podcast. <laughs> podcast. Be sure to recommend that one. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, Morning Brew is actually one of the reasons I started the Wichita Weekly Update. Yeah. Just because I was like, okay, this is awesome to have everything in one spot. Again, I don't watch the news. I don't I don't like reading the news right. really. So it's kind of a good way to sum it up. Um, something I was going to mention earlier, but uh, so Morning Brew, I'm not sure how familiar you are with like their origin story. Yeah. It's super interesting if you haven't heard those like podcasts with those guys, um, Austin and Alex. But the way they did kind of the um, college like referral stuff and they had ambassadors and stuff yeah. like that. Have you guys thought about taking that angle or like, I don't know, because you guys only have so much time using other kids on campus to earn, I don't know, you could pay them, I guess, or do whatever, some kind of um, reward system, but or even with athletes. Have you guys thought about anything like that? We kind of do that a little bit. So we said we'd become friends with some of the athletes, mm -hmm. and they've been kind enough to facilitate introductions. So nice. if yeah. there's an athlete that we don't have a personal connection with that hasn't answered our DM or whatever the case may be, sure. we can typically get an introduction from one of our friends. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you usually recommend? Like you, you were talking about podcasts and morning brew. I'm curious what you like. Podcasts lately, uh, probably last year, My First Million. I don't know if you ever listened to that one. I've heard of um, So Sam Parr. Mm -hmm. Kind of a rival newsletter to Morning Brew. He started the hustle, mm -hmm. and so it started as like an event company, and then it was a, a, I don't know, they had like a million and a half um, subscribers or something. But they sold the HubSpot, okay. And so the podcast is part of HubSpot now. But and his partner sold his company. I think it was like Bevo or something like that. Sold to Twitch. Wow. So anyways, but they're just super interesting. Most episodes are just I think it's twice a week. Are basically I'm just kind of BSing and bouncing business ideas like how does this work and they'll break it down yeah like the economics of it how they think it works why they think it'll fail or work I, don't, yeah. I recommend that one highlights really good that's cool um, what got me into podcasting was Tim Ferriss Joe Rogan yeah. kind of the um, how I built this kind of the interview style yeah. with other people but fairly informal I have a list of questions here so it's like I obviously I try to think it through that's more like Tim Ferriss approach yeah. but I try to be a little more laid back like Joe Rogan you know what yeah. I mean like yeah. it's kind yeah. of a good middle yeah. ground where it's like they're both the best in the game obviously I'm not going to be that but like how do I make that my own? Right. Be prepared, but also be informal. Mm -hmm. So that's kind I like of, that. that's what I recommend. Um, what is your favorite failure in any aspect of your life? Could be player card related, school related, whatever. Wow. Glad you didn't look at the second sheet before I told you about this, because yeah. most people don't see these coming, so I think wow, they think that's fun. That's yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of failures with player card and just yeah. conceptually thinking things through and realizing that it has no place to be there or just not gonna work, the market's not there, or something like that. But personally, I'm trying to think. What do you got? I would okay, this is recent and it's not like a huge failure, but John and I do these like physical challenges. Mm -hmm. Um and one of them that we were doing was I was doing two thousand pull ups in less than seven hours and he was doing two thousand push ups in less than seven hours. And so we attempted that in April. And we made it to 1,452. Wow. And we couldn't make it to 2,000. And so we did end up getting 2,000 about a month later or two. And so I think without that first failure, I might not have had the drive to go and get the yeah. 2,000 because it was way harder than I thought it would be. But the second time, I just kept thinking about the first time. I was like, I'm not going to yeah. let that happen again because that feeling sucked. Did you change your approach or how did you get it the second time? Besides uh, mentality, obviously. Mentality was honestly like the huge part. I just didn't quit when I wanted to quit last time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I trained harder too, but yeah. I, I think the mental edge was the big part of it. Wow. So you said pull-ups and push-ups? I did push-ups, yeah. You that's crazy. Push -ups. It's like Doggins. Like, that's nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doggins was a little bit of inspiration. Yeah, for one. sure. Yeah. Um, one of my cousins actually, he was actually went here for a year or two, um, but his mom, I think he just didn't really know what he wanted to do and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but his mom gave him can't hurt me. I was gonna recommend that book. Yeah, so yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. Um, but he's actually currently training, like he's out to seal right now. Oh, he, he was just in Hell Week like last week. I'm pretty oh sure gosh. he was like this close to making it and then um, he got like hypothermia or something. Oh, so oh. He, he's gonna be back in it. He, he's like, he hasn't wavered all like, I'm gonna get it. But like, wow. it's crazy how just reading that book was inspired. Like I remember I had ran more than like a mile in like yeah. years. I listened to that book, I was running like five miles. <laughs> Have you heard of this 4x4x48 four four challenge? Uh, I feel like I've heard of it, but I don't remember what it is. So you run four miles every four hours for 48 hours, so you do 48 miles for 48 hours. Wow. 
That's crazy. That was a good one. I did you that know, one. You did? Oh. I have not done that one. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read that much in my life. So. <laughs> but I will say, what was this, three years ago or so now? Oh, yeah. We did an impromptu marathon. marathon. Wow. It was no training. How'd that go? We had like four or five. It was Did your toes fall off or anything? It was pretty bad. It was brutal. It was pretty bad. We finished. <laughs> we finished. I wouldn't say we ran a marathon, but we ran most of the marathon. In a hey, if you like finish a marathon, <laughs> that's, that's all that matters. <laughs> that's awesome. We crawled. Yeah, it was that's awesome. It was rough. What is your definition of success? That's another good question. Man. I hate this because I feel like I see so many things online where they're like, this is your definition of success. You're leaving out these things. And so you're wrong. That's sure. a stupid answer. You got it? I mean, I would say I don't want to rely on someone else for a job. Yeah. If I can self, if I can be self-sufficient, I feel like I will, and provide for a family and you yeah. know do the things that I want to do and things like that. I feel like at that point, I will feel successful. Yeah. That might change, sure. you know, as as maybe I near that point or whatever. Yeah. But I think at that point, that is like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, to be successful, to be where I want to be in life, I want to be self-sufficient, you know, have a family yeah. and be able to provide. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, I don't know the definition, but I would say what success looks like to me would be having a family that's happy and healthy. Um, Having not having to worry about money, having done something yeah. hard to where I no longer have to worry about it, yeah. but still being motivated and, and being in good shape and doing things that are exciting and make a difference in the world. Yeah, absolutely, those are both great. What is a tell me about a life motto you live by, or what's the best advice that you've ever received? I, I this is probably gonna sound stupid, but I like the David Goggins "Stay Hard." I think yeah, yeah. I think there's so much to unpack from that that. You know, it, it means so many different things to so many different people. Um, to me, it's just like, keep working, you know, don't don't ever, you know, give up or, it sounds so cliche, I know it does, but it's like. The best answer is cliche, they're, they're exactly. cliche for a reason. <laughs> exactly, but yeah, just, you know, keep them on the grind and, and stuff like that, I think that's probably the best motto. Mm -hmm. I think, so. And then mine comes from the Bible and it's, uh, to whom much will be given, much uh, will be required. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I feel like if you're not gonna get anywhere thinking that it's gonna be easy, it's gonna be hard, but absolutely. there will be the payoff. Yeah, absolutely. Love that. What is a habit that you've developed over the past few years that's most improved your life? Most improved my life. Over the past couple of years, mine has been exercise, consistent exercise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now it's if I don't exercise in the day, there's a problem. Yeah, like I'm not feeling like myself. There's you know, I get too much built up in my head and I can just Having that release is really important for me on a day-to-day -day basis, so you gotta get in, get mm -hmm. work done, and stuff like that. <laughs> so. I think it would be like doing things that scare, scare me. Mm -hmm. And it's not every day, but like things that are hard and that scare me, like take my full run from them, and I try and embrace them now. And that always, I'm always happy whenever I do it. Yeah. Do you have any examples yeah. recently? Yeah, I went to uh, Cody, Wyoming. I have a huge fear of spiders. Okay. I'm not a fan of them. I'll kill a spider, it's small, whatever, and we'll be fine. <laughs> well, my cousin's girlfriend has one of the largest tarantulas there is, and uh, as like a pet. Uh -huh. And so she got it out of the cage, and I let it go in my hand and crawl on my arm. I was so scared. How bad was it? <laughs> Actually, it wasn't. I was just fine. But yeah. No, it, I was very scared. I'm sweating thinking about it right now, but that was one of them where I came that's out. Good. I that's good. That's awesome. Like, I, it's over with. I did it. I felt proud. So Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, what kind of workouts do you like to do? Like most cardio, weightlifting, what do you like to do? I, you know, it changes. Um, there was a while there that I was running for a while and, you know, had goals there. Hit those goals and then now I'm weightlifting again mm -hmm. and just trying to build muscle fast. Yeah. I have a, a couple goals in that space that I want to hit and then I might transition back to running. Yeah, yeah, sure. So very cool. Um, my last couple questions are kind of Wichita specific for the Wichita podcast. What is your favorite part of Wichita or your favorite hidden gym in Wichita? Ooh. Hidden gym. I feel like we've seen a couple recently. Yeah. I don't know. What's your favorite part of Wichita? I like the community aspect. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Wichita is it's a decent sized city. I mean, it's a big city, 
but you feel like everybody knows everybody almost. It's like a small enough everybody knows everybody. Exactly. <laughs> you know, if, you know, it's like if I want to get to know this person, maybe I ask these people. Oh, yeah. One of them will know either a, either know them or a way to get to them. Yeah. So that's that's one of the biggest things for me. It's like the cans is nice, I guess. Yeah. It's like everybody refers everyone and mm -hmm. they want to see you succeed. So yeah. I like I really like the community in that area. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I like it too. I'd also say Groover might be like a hidden yeah, 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 Groover yeah. Labs. Yeah, I think a lot of people like obviously like the core entrepreneur community knows mm -hmm. about it, but I, I don't think a lot of people know about it outside of kind of that circle. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. It's interesting because I don't think I've really interviewed that many people, especially not two people that aren't from here. Most people like grew up here or right. they've lived here for a long time. Yeah. But it's interesting. I mean, you're pretty new, yeah, I'm pretty new. just a few years. So yeah. that's interesting. Um, is there anything you wish Wichita had that it doesn't? Or what would you improve about Wichita? I think there's always a list in my head until I get asked the direct question. Yeah, of course. Right. Um, Wichita. Being a small, not a, a smaller city, it's got a lot yeah. of good attributes. I would say, for my liking, it doesn't have as many outdoor activities sure. as I would like. Yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, the geographical location is mm -hmm. kind of a factor in that, but the number of parks and you know, there's not a lot of rivers or lakes or right. things like that. At least that I found. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's stuff within like a few hours, but there's nothing, nothing crazy that's that close. But right. Yeah. Exactly. I would say, like, we've talked about this one, too, the college environment for, like, things to do on the weekend. Yeah. It's, there's not as many things to do in Wichita, nearly as many as Lawrence or Manhattan. Sure. So that'd be an area that would be cool if that could be developed in the future. Yeah, for sure. Well, I just saw uh, they're looking to put, like, $40 million in a Cessna Stadium. Oh, so really? I don't know, like, long-term, if they're planting the seeds for a football team or something, because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, I heard they're basically team. rebuilding it. So, yeah. You heard soccer team? I think I heard soccer team. Nice. That'd be cool too. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I've been back and forth on football. Like when I first went to college, I was like, I'm gonna get football started at Wichita State, and then they were like, it costs too much money. I'm like, okay, if you're already building a new stadium, that's the biggest cost. Right. So right. what are you exactly. what are you waiting for? So exactly. No, yeah. I'd be excited. That'd I think. So I, mean, cool. I, would, I think that would just change the culture here. And mm -hmm. People tailgating. The hard part would be like people that are just so used to going to yeah. Stillwater or Lawrence or Manhattan. Would they stick around here? You know, that might be the hardest part. But I've never formally tailgated. I'm about to graduate. I just realized that. Yeah, well, that's weird. No football games to do with it. Yeah, it's <laughs> kind of a thing, you know. You got to tailgate a volleyball game or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does Wichita mean to you? Wichita to me, in the past eight months, is it's a good it's a good place to be. I don't know if this really what you're asking but it's a good place to be if you want to get stuff done meet people push yourself forward um, you know I didn't come to Wichita necessarily to you know have a good time party you know whatever else I came to Wichita to get things done push myself forward and I think up to this point I've definitely done that and you know push myself forward push myself uh, my comfortability out of that range, um, and I think Wichita is a great place to do that. Love that. I think Wichita to me is just like a bunch of hidden gems. As, as people though, not like places. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I keep hearing about all these new names that are coming up and getting to hear their story, and it's like everyone is almost so quiet about it. There's just whispers of these faint legends from Wichita. And I feel like there's just a community of people that are incredibly generous and supportive and inspiring. Mm -hmm. I think they're the hidden gems, and that's who I try and roll with and get to meet. Awesome. Thank you, Jacob John. This is awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing more from Player Card. Where can people find you guys individually? You guys on social media? Where yeah. can find Player Card? Yeah, so my uh, Instagram handle is probably the best place at the Jacob OC. Um, LinkedIn is Jacob O'Connor. And the Player Card is at playercard.us. That's mm -hmm. the website as well as the Instagram handle. Perfect. Yep. And I'm just at the John Pete on Instagram. LinkedIn is just John Peterson. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah, it. Have a good one. Awesome.